Yeah, I'm gonna teach you and make a video for you, and you can study that video, mm -hmm. and that video might help other people. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do when we're gonna start tracking is we tell ourselves, what am I doing today? My dog's on just a scent path. My dog's on 100 paces on the first leg. My dog is doing a shits and three track, and I need somewhere where I can have 200 paces for the first leg, 100 paces for the second leg, 50 paces for the third leg, so I need five corners and you figure out your configuration. Right now, we're just doing a scent box where we wanna get straight. So what we wanna do is pick a focal point. Once we have that focal point, we have it in our mind, fully extend our arm, which is about, for me, about two feet, and place our flag to the left, right? Now we're doing a scent box, right? What I like to do as I'm doing a scent box is I do something that we call a tail. So once I start, this is where I'm going. I walk backwards about three to five paces and I just do a little tail. And that's like a little pre-track to help my dog come up. To make sure that my scent box is always the same size, I put one foot in front of the other because more than likely my feet are not gonna change in distance at 50 years old. Right, so I make a mark right here, make a mark right here, and that's the depth of my scent box. And then do the same thing on the other side here to here and then i do my little dance to the end of that and going back really scuffing i'm not just stepping on the grass i'm really scuffing because i'm trying to burn the grass so i can get that odor to come up so my dog can understand that they're smelling crushed vegetation and i'm pairing it with their dog food so i step to that depth of that box and i scuff all the way to the width of the box and i just do that and i make a really nice perfectly square square and the camera doesn't really show but you can see it in real life that's a perfect square why because i kept everything the same here the same and i go here to where it ends and i come up to where it ends and i'm scuffing it and stepping on it scuffing it and stepping on it now what i've done is successful successfully created a positive area and this is called a negative area because there's never going to be food right there and when I place my food, I can clearly see the box so I know exactly where to put the food. If one piece of food falls out, I can grab it. <clears throat> the next part of that is what I like to do because I'm a weirdo. Is I grab some food and I do the outline first. Right? I do the outline first. So that way I can clearly define that edge. And then I can step out the box and place food, right? Because I already defined the outline, I'm not going to be dropping any food outside of that. I just place my food, right? What I'm trying to do is kind of complete the whole area so it's not concentrated on one spot because I want my dog to be moving and sniffing as they pick up food and eat that air is going to be bare but the crushed vegetation situation still is going to be there right mm -hmm. and i do like that and that's pretty good for the first session then when i bring my dog out i'm gonna have just a little bit of chunks because if they don't start and immediately put their head down i drop food to help get their attention to the track scent pad okay okay, okay. super